Hello everybody, hope you're all well and uh, welcome back to a very windy Nubra Beach for probably about the 10th time on this channel. Why am I back again? Well, it's just a fantastic place to uh, hide from my wife. I'm joking. There are much better places to do that. A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. Although those woods probably are quite a good place to, to hide from a spouse if you've not done the food shop right. The real reason that I come here today, again, is that uh, over the years I have found this to be a really good place to test new kit. Uh, there's lots of variety here uh, regardless of what the light is doing and as much as the sunset was forecast, I'm becoming less sure, so we'll see. But the kit that I want to test today is this. This is the Lumix G9 Mark II and uh, if you've watched this channel for enough years you'll know that this is exciting to me because the G9 Mark I is my favourite camera of all time. I loved it because it was micro four thirds and therefore I could use really small lenses and at the time I was using that camera I was travelling all over the place and climbing up mountains and I really appreciated the lightweight. But much more important than that was that the original G9 was the most comfortable camera to hold I've ever used. Ergonomically it was perfect for me uh, and that's important because again as many of you will know I hate tripods. Uh, so I'm very intrigued to see what this new version is like to use and full disclosure if you don't want to watch till the end of the video you'll know hopefully that uh, last week I released a video all about the gear that I'm using for the foreseeable future and this didn't feature. So uh, I have been testing this for a while and I'm going to talk about this camera why I like it but also why it won't be my my daily camera going forward. So that's plan for this video, regardless of whether there is a sunset or not. But fingers crossed there is, I've not seen one for a while. Real quality item, this chair. Anyway, let's uh, let's talk about this camera. Nope, wrong one. Let's talk. Let's talk about this camera. So yeah, this is the G9, and this is the S5. And hopefully, you'll forgive me for getting them confused because uh, they're very, very difficult to tell apart. I mean, look, look at this. Seriously, they're basically identical. And in fact, the only difference I can see between the two of them is that there is some ventilation uh, on the S5 around the dials for uh, heat dissipation. And also, obviously, the S5 Mark II has got a, um, a full frame sensor, whereas the G9 has got a, uh, a micro four thirds sensor. And to be honest, I don't know why Lumix has done this. Uh, maybe there are some cost efficiencies um, or maybe they just designed one of them and thought that's brilliant. Let's just keep it for all of our cameras. But there are some implications to it, both good and bad. Um, we can start with good. Let's say you're a photographer who shoots for the most part full frame, but you see value in also shooting micro four thirds sometimes. Perhaps it's for the faster readout speeds. Maybe it's because you shoot a lot of telephoto stuff and you want to use smaller telephoto lenses. Then this, is just an absolute dream because it means you have access to two formats and you only have to learn one camera body. And I think learning a camera body off by heart is a crucial ingredient to becoming a successful photographer. And I've noticed over the years while running workshops and stuff that there seems to be a correlation between how well people know their camera and how good the photos they're taking with that camera are. And if I see somebody who's constantly digging around in the menus because they don't know where certain stuff is, or if they've got their eye to the viewfinder and then to change a setting, they have to pull the camera away to look at where the buttons are, that muddled thinking in many cases tends to lead to sort of muddled work 
Whereas, if I see someone who never has to go into the menus because they've got their camera absolutely dialed and they're able to keep the camera to their eye constantly and make changes to the settings because they know where all the buttons are, then that clarity of thinking tends to sort of bleed into their work and make work with lots of clarity. And I don't mean clarity like the slider, obviously. And also the word bleed has sort of negative connotations. Usually, I don't, it's not a negative thing, it's a good, not making any sense, am I? So yeah, potentially for some people, the fact that these two cameras appear to be exactly the same could be a positive. The negative is that for most people, I think looking at these cameras, they'll look at two bodies that look exactly the same and think, well, why, why would I ever choose the one with the smaller sensor. Now price aside, and off the top of my head, I don't know the price of these two cameras, but it used to be the case, certainly was for me, that part of the decision at least to choose micro four thirds was size. And I mean, it's been the case for a long time that not all micro four thirds cameras have been micro. Then I mean, the original G9 is not a small camera. This is it. But the thing is there was never a full frame camera that looked and weighed exactly the same as it from the same brand. And while I definitely don't think it's a deal breaker that this camera is exactly the same size and weight as a full frame camera, I do also think that Micro Four Thirds on the whole is in a bit of a trickier spot than it was in a few years ago. Now for me, the reason I always loved Micro Four Thirds and the weight saving of Micro Four Thirds was the lenses. And the benefit tended to grow exponentially with the longer lenses. So let's say for example, for the sake of argument, that any lens type was like half the weight of a full frame lens. And so if you're talking about a standard zoom, like a 24 to 70 or equivalent in micro four thirds terms, you might be talking about a saving of two or 300 grams, something like that. But with the telephoto lenses, you could be talking about a saving of up to a kilo. And just to demonstrate, if you've not seen many micro four thirds lenses, how small they can be, check out this. This is a 15 millimeter uh, Leica Lumix collaboration. So it's 30 millimeters in full frame terms and it's absolutely tiny. But the difficulty that micro four thirds has got, I think, is that, uh, well, the savings are slowly diminishing, particularly with lenses like this. I mean, this, as I said, tiny lens, but I spent a whole video recently talking about why I love this lens. This is a 40 millimeter full frame lens from Sony, all metal construction, super lightweight. It's like a hundred and something grams. And because I like to shoot with lenses like this, it means the weight saving I can make by shooting micro four thirds is actually minimal, particularly when the camera is basically the same weight as a full frame camera. And talking about 24 to 70s, for example, this is the second generation of Sony's 24 to 70 GM lens. And they made a ridiculous weight saving with this one versus the last one. I mean, it's still much, much heavier than a micro four thirds equivalent, but the weights are coming down. Now, if you're a micro four thirds user, that's not a reason to just sell up and go to full frame because you can still make a saving. But if you're a full frame user or a user of any system other than micro four thirds, it means the pull of micro four thirds is getting less and less seemingly. And that, in my mind at least, is what this camera is up against. No, wrong one. Uh, I don't massively want to talk about the specs of this camera because uh, it's modern. And like all modern cameras, it's capable of taking good photos. And sure, it might have a little bit more noise, but to all intents and purposes, this is capable of creating fantastic work. And if it's not creating fantastic work, chances are it's not the camera's fault. And in the case of this video, it's, it's definitely not the camera's fault, it's the operator. But for what it's worth, this camera has 25 megapixels. Uh, it has a really cool high res mode where you can shoot handheld and get images of up to 100 megapixels. Uh, and there's quite a cool feature where you can add LUTs to the camera. So you can be looking at the scene decorated in your favorite preset, basically, before you've even pressed the shutter. And that's quite cool. Well, I honestly thought we stood a chance for a minute, but um, sun's about to head into the clouds. Whoa! Whoa! That was lucky. Uh, I should probably come up with some sort of conclusion. Mm. A few years ago, when I decided to stop using 
Lumix cameras. And bearing in mind, I had a commercial relationship with Lumix at the time, so it was a big, big decision. The biggest reason for it was video autofocus. Uh, I just couldn't trust it on the Lumix cameras. And that has been fixed now. The autofocus, video autofocus on this G9 and the S5, it's fantastic. And so you would probably think that I would just jump straight back to Lumix. The problem I've got, I think, is that as I've said multiple times recently, I have spent the last two years, I reckon, searching for the perfect camera. And the process has exhausted me and my bank account. And I'd literally, just before Lumix got in touch to tell me about this camera, settled on my kit going forward. And I made a video about it. If you didn't see it, I'll link it somewhere here. And so I guess if this was gonna become my camera, it was up against it because it means another change, selling another load of gear, bringing another load of gear in, getting to know a new system again. And there are big advantages of that. As I've said, two systems, one body, all that. But because I now shoot with really small lenses, predominantly, and because I've invested a lot of money and time into Sony cameras, and because I've spent years testing other cameras that has just completely killed my appetite for testing lots of cameras all the time, I just don't see myself using this day to day and making yet another change, despite the fact that it's clearly a great camera. But in short, these are fantastic cameras. If you are in the Micro Four Thirds ecosystem, fantastic news for you. This is a brilliant camera. Yeah, right one. This is a brilliant camera. Uh, if you're in the L mount system, equally this is a fantastic camera. If you'd like to use both, you're in luck because this works perfectly. Yeah, so they're my thoughts on the, the G9 Mark II. Hopefully it made some kind of sense. Anyway, big thank you for watching and uh, thank you so much to the sponsor of this week's video, Squarespace. Uh, I've actually just updated my gear page on my website, which was what we call in the UK a doddle. Basically it means very, very easy to do. Uh, so for the first time in a long time, that is accurate. So go and check that out if you're interested in what I shoot with. Uh, and also I'm very excited about Squarespace at the moment because they've just released functionality to allow people to add online courses to their websites and their online stores. And that's something that I'm definitely going to be uh, taking advantage of soon. So watch this space for that. But if like many photographers, what you really want is a website just to display your portfolio, your very best work in exactly the way that you want to display it, then I couldn't recommend Squarespace enough. Uh, my template is called Wells. I've used it for many years. And like everything on Squarespace, uploading images and ordering them and deciding exactly how you want your website to look. Well, I mean, it, again, it's, it's a doddle. So if you would like to try Squarespace for free, then you can do so by going to squarespace.com to start a free trial. And after that, if you'd like to make a purchase, just go to squarespace.com forward slash James and you can get 10% off your first purchase. And a huge thank you to Squarespace for their continued support of this channel and for making this channel possible, basically. It's much appreciated. Uh, next week, I won't be using this camera, sadly, in some ways. Um, no. Nope this camera, I'll be using the, the gear that I, um, well, it's on my website, uh, but I'll see you then, unless I get the food shop wrong again, in which case you, you probably won't hear from me.